You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Wednesday, June 5th. President Joe Biden has signed an executive order barring migrants who illegally cross the southern border from receiving asylum during periods of high border encounters. The White House stated these actions aim to ease the burden on Border Patrol agents and streamline the removal of those without lawful grounds to remain. Former President Donald Trump issued a similar order in 2018, which was blocked by a federal judge. Trump's campaign criticized Biden's move, claiming it would lead to, quote, amnesty, not border security. Conversely, Krish Omara Vinyaraja of Global Refuge expressed concerns over the legality and moral implications of the order, advocating for comprehensive immigration reform instead. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan dismissed the order as ineffective, citing Biden's low approval ratings on immigration. Data from U.S. Customs and Border Patrol reports record encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border, underscoring the ongoing crisis. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will address a joint session of the U.S. Congress, marking his fourth time doing so, the most by any world leader in U.S. history. This decision comes amidst ongoing Israeli military operations in the Gaza Strip to eradicate Hamas and rescue hostages taken during the October 7 attack that killed over 1,200 people. Netanyahu expressed his honor in representing Israel and highlighting the nation's just war against Hamas. The invitation came from bipartisan congressional leaders emphasizing support for Israel's fight against terrorism and the broader geopolitical challenges posed by Iran, Russia, and China. Pro-Palestinian protests have erupted globally, calling for a ceasefire, while the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry reports over 35,000 deaths since the conflict began. Pastor Jack Graham of Prestonwood Baptist Church criticized the NSA for its Pride Month statement, calling it spiritual wickedness and accusing the government of celebrating sin with taxpayer dollars. The NSA tweeted, quote, We are dedicated to creating a workspace where members of the LGBTQIA plus community can thrive authentically. General Mike Flynn echoed the sentiment, saying the only flag the NSA should fly is the American flag. Author Eric Metaxas and journalist Megan Basham also condemned the NSA stance. The Department of Defense faced similar backlash for supporting Pride Month, with some veterans expressing disillusionment. Freedom of Information Act documents reveal taxpayer money has been used to promote LGBT pride events in the military. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson criticized the FBI's Pride Month tweet, arguing that diversity, as indexed by sexual preference, does not inherently make organizations stronger. This episode is sponsored in part by World Relief, the Christian humanitarian organization we trust to tackle the challenges at the border and around the world. Today, our world faces an unprecedented crisis, with hundreds of millions driven from their homes due to violent conflict, climate change, and extreme poverty. More than 36 million of these displaced mothers, fathers, children, sisters, and brothers have been forced to seek safety outside their countries as refugees, the most recorded in history. If this breaks your heart, you're not alone. The need for immediate relief and sustainable solutions is urgent, and you can help. By becoming a monthly partner with World Relief, you're creating lasting change for people worldwide. As war and famine displaces our brothers and sisters around the world, you'll be there. As couples reunite after years of separation, you'll be there. As refugee families settle into new homes, you'll be there. As a monthly partner, you'll address the root causes of displacement and extend a compassionate welcome to the weary, vulnerable, and persecuted. Plus, with a $25 gift by June 30th, World Relief offers two free e-learning courses in honor of World Refugee Day. These courses provide practical guidance on showing the love of Jesus to our immigrant and refugee neighbors. This is a limited time offer, so visit worldrelief.org slash refugee day to learn more. That's worldrelief.org slash refugee day. You can check it out today by clicking the link in the podcast show notes below. Our thanks to World Relief for sponsoring this episode. Elder Clark Gilbert and Shirley Hoogstra announced the creation of the American Council on Education's Commission on Faith-Based Colleges and Universities. Speaking at a January 2023 event, Gilbert emphasized that faith-based institutions unite people of diverse backgrounds and make education accessible, saying, quote, young adults are looking for somewhere that will value and recognize their faith. Hoogstra highlighted the unique contributions of religious universities, noting their role in advancing affordability and accessibility in education. The commission includes leaders from institutions like George Fox University, Yeshiva University, and the University of Notre Dame. The inaugural event will bring together representatives from 40 to 50 institutions to address shared challenges and foster collaboration between religious 
and secular schools. Early results from India's national elections indicate a potential shift in the political landscape, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party led alliance appearing poised for a narrow victory, marking a third consecutive term. Despite Modi's bold campaign claims, critics argue the results reflect a diminishing appeal of his persona and Hindu nationalism, which has fueled persecution of minorities. Dr. Michael Williams of the United Christian Forum said, quote, The election results have paved the way for a return to a more democratic India. The BJP's lead is significantly reduced from previous elections, with the National Democratic Alliance securing around 290 seats compared to the opposition's 235 seats. Dr. John Dayal, a Christian activist, noted that Modi's reduced majority limits his ability to pursue a Hindu Rashtra agenda. Despite challenges, the resurgent Congress-led alliance suggests a move towards a more inclusive future. In Hong Kong, the 35th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre was marked by warnings from Release International about escalating persecution of Christians. President Xi Jinping led celebrations of Hong Kong's handover to China, claiming democracy flourishes despite a crackdown on dissent. Release International's Bob Fu cautioned that under the new Article 23, Catholic priests in Hong Kong could face jail if they don't disclose confessions related to crimes of treason. He urged the UK to defend religious freedom in its former colony. Release International CEO Paul Robinson highlighted the severity of the crackdown, stating it's the harshest since the Cultural Revolution, now extending from mainland China to Hong Kong and beyond. The J. Willard and Alice S. Marriott Foundation has pledged $1 million to restore the historic Scotland AME Zion Church in Potomac, Maryland. Built in 1924 by black congregants, the church has faced significant structural issues, including a basement wall collapse in 2019. David Marriott announced the donation, emphasizing the foundation's commitment to the community's rebuilding efforts. The church is part of an $11 million restoration initiative called the Second Century Project, which has raised $8.2 million to date. This project aims to preserve the church as a community center. Letitia Gassaway Paul, a descendant of the church's founders, praised the unexpected donation. If the fundraising goal is met, the church could reopen by December. Reverend Dr. Evelina Huggins highlighted the investment significant for the broader community. In a controversial twist, pop star Katy Perry edited Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker's commencement address at Benedictine College to include pro-gay messages, sparking backlash. Perry's Instagram post featured Butker seemingly saying Happy Pride Month and congratulating the class of 2024. Butker's original speech emphasized traditional Catholic values, including motherhood and family, leading to accusations of misogyny and a petition with 230,000 signatures calling for his dismissal. Despite the uproar, Butker remained steadfast in his faith, denouncing the shocking level of hate he received. Chiefs coach Andy Reid defended Butker, highlighting free speech, while quarterback Patrick Mahomes praised Butker's character, saying, quote, I judge him by the character that he shows every single day. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.